Welcome everybody to Music Monday. This week we are going to be reviewing a fairly new single. This one is from Tokyo Girl Style. This is Jujika. Out of the four Tokyo Girl songs that I know, this one is number two. This is another one of those songs for me that I was instantly drawn to. I feel like the moment that I listened to it, I loved it and it was stuck in my head and I wanted to listen to it again and again and again. It has a really awesome vibe to it. I love the story that it's telling and just another one of those banging singles from Tokyo Girl Style. This song has a really great darker sound to it. Obviously the song is supposed to sound a little spooky. It is uh, being released in conjunction with a film that the Tokyo Girl Style Girls are appearing in, which is, surprise surprise, a horror film. The sound of this song has a very minor key, dark sound. It's a little epic actually, and I kind of dig that about it. Uh, the girls are delivering banging vocals out of this. The music is right on, and the music video is perfect. Upon my initial watch of the music video, I was a little confused as to why there were crosses everywhere. And then I did a little bit of research and discovered that Jujika actually means crucifixion. So it makes sense that the music video is littered with crosses. It's almost as if the girls are literally being crucified. I really like the tone of the music video. It has a very dark, edgy, almost like haunted mansion vibe to it. And I think that's what really drew me towards it is those big poofy white dresses that just look so... Haunted Mansion, Attic Bride, and then the music really just sold it after that. That kind of laces in with the instrumentals of this song, which also have a very dark, gritty sound to them, but at the same time are not so distracting that you don't get to experience the fullness of the song. Something that I kind of noted from this song is that there's something a little baby metal about it, and I almost like that idea of shadowing a group that's making it really big in the Japanese music scene and mirroring some of their tactics of like what's in and what's popular and taking that and adding your own flair and your own style to it. I understand that this song is a theme song for a horror movie that the girls are participating in, but it's also smart as a business move to subtly copycat some things that bigger artists are doing because then it gives you a little more of a platform to stand on because there's already that idea of like, this is what's cool, this is what's popular, this is what's in. I want to listen to more things that are like this. And considering that Megitsune seems to be the really big baby metal song, and this has a very similar vibe to that, people might be drawn to this song because it reminds them of Megitsune. I think that's American music in a nutshell, is that one artist comes out with a single that sets a new tone, and if it does really well, a lot of other uh, musicians follow suit. The Gaga started kind of changing what pop music was, and I feel like a lot of other genres have kind of flowed into that. I kind of feel like in the Japanese music industry, AKB kind of changed J-pop to this very big, not necessarily full sounding instrumentals and vocal line, but just kind of cute and there and lots and lots of face. And that kind of changed around the mood and suddenly there were lots of big girl groups showing up and lots of girls trying to emulate AKB. Then we have a group like Baby Metal who comes out with a really strong vocalist and there's only a handful of them and they kind of change the industry to suddenly now it requires a lot of talent to be really popular and great in Japan and I feel like Baby Metal is making that stand in Japanese music where they have such strong vocals that they've kind of shaped and changed so now maybe groups like Tokyo Girls Style who already have really strong great vocalists are going to get more attention because that's kind of what's turning into the in thing. I think my favorite part of the song is the vocals and the vocal line. The girls are delivering strong full vocals here which is something I always appreciate especially from Japanese girl groups, pop groups specifically, because they tend to have a thinner, more nasal sound in the vocals. I'm sorry, Morning with May, but current lineup, I am looking at you. And I really appreciate that the girls of Tokyo Girl Style have a rounder, fuller sound. It's a lot easier on the ears, and it just sounds like they're giving it their all, and I really appreciate that. I complained in the last single that we reviewed of Tokyo Girl Style that there were some really strong voices and then every once in a while I kept hearing this one who just wasn't holding her own against the others. But here it is all top notch, it is all quality and I 
love it. And now moving on to the music video, which is something that I feel like is a very strong suit for Tokyo Girl style. Whoever produces them and manages them always tells a great story with the music video. This one featured some really awesome costumes. I already mentioned the Attic Bride Haunted Mansion look that they had going on, but I was totally in love with the black dresses that they had, where they almost had like a tube top and then shorts and then a meshy, like full dress all the way around it. And on the back, they had more crosses, which was a brilliant tie in to the music video, which already has crosses as like a central theme. It was nice to see more of that and to really have that integrated throughout the entire music video. What I really liked about these costumes was not that they were simple, but they just weren't overly complex. And what I've noticed about Tokyo Girl Style is a lot of times in their music videos, they'll give these really big elaborate costumes during the dance shot in particular to kind of cover up the fact that all they're doing is swiveling. Like in Limited Addiction, they had these big giant poofy skirts because the dance literally just consisted of them with their hands above their you know, heads and then just swishing their hips back and forth. And it was kind of like, let's throw in something so that people are distracted by how simple the dance is. This one, they had a big giant poofy dress, but it was only for the intimate shots. And I liked that they kept the dance shot outfit like very simplistic and it didn't really distract from the dance. I thought the creature that was in the background of a lot of the intimate shots was really awesome. I love the dark feel to it of it encompassing the one girl as she's standing there that it's kind of hanging out in the back while the girls are interacting with each other while they're just singing. But there was one shot where the creature is actually dead in one of the intimate shots and I didn't notice it until about three times in watching the music video and I'm almost wondering if that particular girl who the creature was dead with, if that's the girl that maybe survives through the horror movie or maybe is the supernatural one. I would actually have to see the movie in order to understand what I'm talking about a little bit better but I almost feel like including the creature dead in only one girl's intimate shot that seems to tell something about what they're trying to say in the story. Maybe as far as this story is concerned, she's the one that brought the monster to life, or maybe she's the one that was able to kill it before it got to her. Who knows? The creature was very labyrinth to me. I wanted to know where David Bowie was and where the owl went. We are pretty much set in a abandoned warehouse, church, asylum type setting, which is great. I feel like every scary movie music video, TV show, whatever, takes place in a abandoned church asylum warehouse school building. Like, you can't really tell which one it is. You kind of have to go by, like, the tertiary clues. Like, oh, there's some crosses. This must be a church. Oh, wait, there is a wheelchair. No, this might be a hospital instead. Are those desks? Is this a school? Or maybe it's a warehouse that makes all these things. What are we supposed to do? The only thing I didn't really understand was why the girls had to be chained up to the cross. It makes sense that they couldn't have just nailed their wrists into the cross like a, a proper crucifixion. That, that was rude. That chaining them up was probably the most logical response rather than trying to go for gruesome. I didn't understand why the one girl had honey dropped in her hands. It was probably supposed to be blood, but it was looked like honey. And I think if I had a firmer grasp on what the lyrics were, I would be able to understand the music video in a more full context. I'm not really sure what all the visuals have to do with the song. What I will say about Tokyo Girls music is that their videos don't always completely sync up with the songs anyways. I'm thinking of Limited Addiction where we have the chameleons and the parkour and the rose petal bath. Like, not quite sure what this has to do with the song, so we'll just go with it. I'm gonna just assume that our visuals in this, the demonic figure, the church, the crucifixion of the girls, the candles, the honey in the hands, I'm gonna guess it all had to do with just kind of a general unsettling horror theme. Whatever it was, it was still unified and it worked. The honey in the hands might be a bit of a stretch there. Either way, this was a cool music video and if you don't like it, I'm sorry, you need to reevaluate your life choices because this was a good one. My only complaint is that as AVX does, it ended too abruptly and I would like to see the full MV now please, thank you. This is a wonderful addition to Tokyo Girl Styles lineup. Uh, even though it is just something that they released in conjunction to kind of boost attention to their music and their movie, 
normally I'm not a huge fan of synergy like that. I, I think that's a little cheap, but because they did it so well, I'm gonna give them a pass on this and say this was a fantastic 16th single for Tokyo Girl Style. This was an amazing 16th single, and I think it's a great way to kind of mark themselves. There was a sign of a maturity in the group that is starting to blossom now. The way that they were styled, the way that their costumes were, the way that the song was, there was something very mature about it, and it almost is like a sign of what's to come for Tokyo Girl Style, that they're going to start moving in that direction, since most of them are coming to legal age that they can do more sexy songs. Just the cutting of the outfits, the way that they were styled, something tells me that they're going to start moving in that direction of a more mature sound, a more mature look for themselves, much like other J-pop artists do once they start growing up. Examples being Cute and Smilage. From Hello Project, I know, but they're the best example that I can come up with at the moment. But that is all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have heard this song, please let us know what your thoughts are in the comments below. We would love to read those thoughts that you have on the music video, on the song, on whatever. And we will see you all again next week. Have a great rest of your day. Peace out. Quit. You think about this. Quit.